All right. Welcome, welcome, everyone, to this, our December 1st, 2020 Toastmasters meeting of the Golden Speakers Toastmasters of Fairfield. I am your president, Aaron Russell, and let's start with the club mission. The mission of a Toastmasters club is to provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Here for our mission, everyone. With that, I would like to pass it off to our Toastmaster for tonight, Dan Craig. Take it away, Dan. Thank you, Mr. President, fellow Golden Speakers. My role as your Toastmaster tonight is to keep things moving along. I think before I introduce the role players, I'll mention that the meeting theme is looking back. We have two quotes. You live life looking forward, you understand life looking backward. Soren Kierkegaard. And you can't connect the dots looking forward, you can only connect them looking backwards. Steve Jobs. Our first illustrious role player, which I will begin with, is the timer. And tonight that's me. So I'm going to explain my role. We have one prepared speech tonight, which is eight to 10 minutes. At the eight minute mark, I'm going to put up a green background. Oh, it's not on my, not on my computer. Oof. Would you like the cards, Mr. Toastmaster? Yes, please. I'm not sure where right. they went. All right. Okay, we'll deal with that technicality, but I'll mention that I am going to put up a green <laughs> signal at eight minutes, a yellow at nine minutes, and a red at 10 minutes, and our speaker will have 30 seconds to complete. Then tonight we'll have table topics. Thanks. One to two minutes. At one minute, the green at a minute and a half. We've got yellow, two minutes, red, and once again, we'll have 30 seconds to finish up. Our evaluators, our speech evaluator will be two to three minutes. The green card will come up at two minutes, the yellow at two and a half, the red at three. And we'll decide about our table topics evaluator, but that will follow the same basic pattern. I'll keep track of everything and I'll give a report at the end. Now, our next role player that we'd like to hear from is going to be our grammarian, Bob Fogel. Bob, please explain your role. Thank you, Mr. Toastmasters. <clears throat> Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and our viewers at home. I'm changing my hat, sir. Um, mm -hmm. As grammarian, keep you guessing, everyone. <laughs> as grammarian, my role this evening is to um, pay close attention to all the speakers, listen carefully to their language usage. I'll take note of any improper language as well as any outstanding words, quotes, sayings, uh, dots as grammarian is also my duty to introduce the word of the day. And I have sent the word of the day, the meaning and use of it in sentence to everyone so they should have it on their chat. Should I go ahead and read it off my paper though for everyone? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the word of the day is probidity, not to be mixed up with puberty which means honesty, honor, and integrity, meaning upright and character. An example of is, while I know I'm not a model of probidity, I try to tell the truth as often as possible. And each speaker is encouraged to use the word of the day. And when I'm called upon, I'll share 
on my report. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Bob. I, I believe you, you are putting one extra syllable in the word. So let me give this a give this a try. I believe it's probity. Three yeah. syllables. Correct. Right. The other thing you're going to do for us as grammarian Bob is listen for interesting phrases, good grammar usage, or perhaps any grammar that may need to be corrected. Like the and I feel I feel certain that you're going to fulfill that job with probity. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, look at that. Our okay. next role player, our awe counter tonight is Carmen Anticona. Let's hear for Carmen. The purpose of the awe counter is to show the importance know the words and sounds that are used as a crutch or pause filler by anyone who speaks. During the meeting, I will listen for overused words, including and, well, but, so, or you know. And I will also listen for filler sounds, including a, uh, um, and, are. I will give my report at the end of the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Dosmasters. Very good. We are going to hear later on from Bob Fogel as general evaluator. We'll also hear later from Art Atkinson as joke master. Now let's hear from Gene Simpton Craig who's going to read the objectives for Art's talk. Just before I do that, Mr. Toastmaster, I just wanted to acquaint Bob, because we will have two evaluators tonight, that just as a reminder, you're going to want to be evaluating the evaluators. Is that, is that good? OK. So I'm, you're evaluating Art's speech tonight. And right. then I'm evaluating you, because you're going to evaluate Art. You're going to evaluate my evaluation. Correct. So it's not about art speech. It's how well did I evaluate and what suggestions would you have? And same with our table topics evaluator, Carmen. Okay. So it's abstract. But I just wanted to say that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Did you want me to go ahead and talk about art's objectives for his speech? Yes. And I actually don't have a general introduction for art. So I think we'll have to just pass on that. You go ahead and give the objectives of the speech and then turn it over to art. Okay. Um, art is doing Willem Sokol, Mentor to Thousands, the 2.0 version. This is going to be longer little longer. It's also going to incorporate some elements of feedback that he got last week. And so it's a it's almost a before and after again, but also expanded because it will be eight to 10 minutes. The purpose of the introduction to Toastmasters mentoring project is for the member to clearly define how Toastmasters envisions mentoring. It's also the purpose is for the member to share some aspect of a previous experience as a protege or a mentee. The speech is about a time when the member was a protege, maybe from any time in his or her life. The member may discuss any aspect of the protege experience, but this project should not be a report on the content of Introduction to Toastmasters Mentoring Project. So he's applying this to his personal, his personal life. And I will just mention Art has been a Toastmaster since early 2006. He has served in a variety of officer roles in the club, been very helpful in building membership and just being an all around engaged member. 
He's very experienced. It's always a pleasure to hear from Art. I'm very much looking forward to this next installment from him. Let's go ahead and welcome Art. Thank you, Madam Evaluator. In 1962, 63, and 64, I had a mentor I had a mentor with whom I worked for three years. Curiously enough, in that three years, I only met him privately three times. All the other times we met in a context that there was a hundred other people present. Nevertheless, this mentor had an enormous impact on me that I still operate under the influence of his mentoring. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, viewers at home and guests who may view us virtually. Maestro Willem Sokol, my mentor, was music director and conductor of the Seattle Youth Symphony Orchestra. For 28 years, starting in 1960, through 1988, he built the organization known as the Seattle Youth Symphony Organization into the preeminent organization of its kind in the United States. He had 10 children of his own and was a father figure to a hundred young musicians in each orchestra. He was a mentor, not a coach. He was not teaching me how to play my instrument, the bassoon. That was the job of my bassoon teacher. Mentoring meetings number one and two with him were private auditions and they were nerve wracking. However, my preparation had begun three years earlier in the summer of eighth grade when I began practicing my instruments out of my own free will, practicing two and three hours a day. So those two private auditions, although they were nerve wracking, went very well. And I was admitted to play in the orchestra. Over the next two years, I had at least 50 mentoring meetings with Vic Willem Sokol. Saturday, every Saturday, three hours a day, orchestra rehearsal. Sokol had the gift to be capable of mentoring a hundred young musicians at a time. What was he teaching? Musicianship. Specifically, he was teaching us the art of orchestral musicianship. How did he do it? With love, not fear. Beginning with love of us individually. Love of great orchestral literature. His love of the inner workings of the great classic repertoire. His love of making music. He just demonstrated all of these things by the way he acted in front of us at rehearsal. He demanded excellence. He expected excellence. He cultivated excellence. He showed us how to work with a hundred other people to produce great music, which is not at all, not all about your own playing. It's about how to be silent at the appropriate time and then to begin playing again at the exact correct moment. It's about how to wait patiently while the conductor works with some other section of the orchestra to achieve a result that they need to make. It's about how to listen. 
It's about how to follow the conductor's adjustments and instructions during the performance. Mentoring develops musicianship, which is a whole way of being, an entire set of skills and attitudes, the most important of which is keeping the head and the heart in balance. Really great music conveys intense emotions. The musician's job is to convey those emotions to the audience listening without losing control and being consumed by those emotions himself. So we played amazing, great literature, Beethoven's Egmont Overture, Haydn's Symphony Number no. 104, The Clock, Tchaikovsky's Symphonies 4, 5, and 6, The Mozart Requiem, The Firebird Suite, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, and numerous pieces by other composers. His mentoring was demonstrated on the evening of November 23rd, the day after, the November 23rd, 1963, the day after JFK was assassinated. He did not cancel the concert that we had rehearsed for six months to perform. We went ahead dedicating the composition that we were playing to the memory of our fallen president. What was his impact upon me? Well, the first thing is he generated in, in me a lifelong love of performing and listening to instrumental music. A love of teamwork, especially big teams operating as one mind and admiration for skills of other people. Out of those three mentoring meetings in three years, numbers one and two we discussed were private auditions. Number three was about a month before the end of the concert season in my, <clears throat> the year in which I was graduating from high school and leaving town to go to college. It was a small group of the first chair players in the wind section of the orchestra. And our topic that we were pestering him about was what colleges should we go to? What music program should we enter? What career choices should we pursue? And his advice, which was very hard for him to say, I could see it on his face was do not do this unless you absolutely cannot live with yourself if you don't do it. It was difficult for me to hear it. Every one of us, it was difficult to hear that advice, especially since he had cultured in us this musicianship, which was passionate love for the music. It took me two years to accept his advice and pursue it and not keep on going in the direction of being a professional musician. The thing about great mentors is that they tell you what you need to hear, not what you wanted to hear. He became legendary throughout the orchestral music scene in the United States became legendary for the quality of music that his musicians produced, which was a reflection of his excellent mentoring driven by love. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, for the opportunity to speak about this. Thank you, Art. Now let's all take two minutes to evaluate Art's speech. 
we can send a private chat to him with our feedback. This is what we played the night after JFK died. That's two minutes. And we hit the grand finale. <laughs> All right. I will tell you as timer that our speaker qualified. And I think we all know who we want to vote for, for best speaker tonight. Gene, as speech evaluator, are you ready to go ahead or do you want us to move on to, is that right? Are you the speech evaluator? Yes. Do you want to go ahead with the evaluation or do you want us to move to table topics? Why don't we go to table topics? I'm almost done, but I just don't want to to rush it. Okay. Our table topics master tonight is Aaron Russell. Let's hear it for Aaron. I just have a lot of probity around my evaluation responsibilities. <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> All right. I will take from here. Yay! Table topics master! All right. So as our theme is tonight is looking back, the questions that I have all relate to uh, the, to that phrase in both literal and figurative ways. I guess I will put it that way. <laughs> Who would like to be the first to do a table topic speech tonight? I'll go. Okay. All right, Bob, well, uh, thank you. Pick a number between one and seven, Bob. We'll go three. Okay. Bob, describe a time when a past experience helped you out with a problem in the present day. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master. Welcome, fellow Toastmasters and viewers at home. As I answer the question, what happened in my life back then that made uh, help me in the future as of today? I can think of many instances that I uh, experienced some bad things or had done some bad things. But well, one particular stands in mind is when I was a young boy, I was kind of mischief, kind of rowdy, kind of this, that, and the other. And being a young teenage boy, I uh, went with a couple of buddies of mine, and we uh, went to Kmart. And while we were at Kmart, 
I had some sticky fingers and uh, it was kind of like a fish hook, you know, those little fish things up through the water. It was a pocket knife. It was shiny, had my name written all over it. <laughs> Naturally, I took that pocket knife, stuffed in my pocket, went home, didn't think too much about it. And my mom, she was the house mom, obviously. She was doing my clothes. She was putting my clothes away and, and she had put my underwear and socks in there and she saw something shiny in that drawer. Well, she pulled this out and lo and behold, there's a pocket knife. And she knew I didn't have any money or any means to buy a pocket knife. So she confronted me about it. Bob, where'd this come from? I had to admit I had stole it. And mom and her great wisdom decided, well, I know just what we'll do. She didn't make a mix here or nothing. She took me back to Kmart and, as, and she made me stand up to the manager, <laughs> pull this pocket knife out and hand it to the manager of the store and admit that I had stole this pocket knife. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> sweating bullets. But that was one lesson I never forgot and I never shoplifted again because I had mobility and shoplifting. Uh, good. Thank you, Bob, for that redemption story. <laughs> Could have just stabbed her. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I think I'll edit that dog. out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not a good idea. With that, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> who, would, who would like to go next? Gene. One through seven without three. My theory is that your best questions are at the front and then you start running out of gas as you get towards the end. Oh, I don't know. So I'll take, I'm going to take, yeah, but, on, but the first one might be just your warming up. So that one isn't good either. <laughs> so how about two? Okay. Describe a time when you were so focused on the past that you missed out on the present. Thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master, fellow Toastmasters and viewers at home. This question is going to take me a little deeper than I might normally go. It has to do with relationships, particularly with boyfriends. I at my formative years, I, at the same time, was becoming aware of basically misogyny and sexism and male uh, predations against females and the dominance issues. It was not a great way to have relationships with that in the background. I found that often in relationships, I would be more focused on the power dynamics and concern that I'm being subjugated in some way. Even if the guy was just a very nice guy, wasn't trying to do that at all, but I was just very caught up in viewing the world and all, everything that was going on from that lens. It's not exactly looking back, 
and missing an opportunity in the presence. But in a way, it's it's having a viewpoint that continues to color the lens that I'm looking at and the person that I'm looking at, regardless of what their present day qualities and contributions could be to my life. I would say I've gotten over that, but it took a while. It took a while to get that sorted out for myself. So that's where something from the past, a continuing philosophy or viewpoint colored my perceptions of opportunities in the present. Thank you, Jane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who would like to go next? Dan. All right. Can somebody time me? I'll time you. Okay, I'll loan you the cards. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you going to bring them to me, or do I need to come get them from you? Or? I was going to. I was going to upload them, but oh, <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> I'll just say. I'll just say green. Okay. okay. I don't. Yeah. Okay. How about number Four. one? I think that Aaron <laughs> didn't take long to warm up. I think he hit the ground running. Okay. If there's something you could change about your past, what would it be and why? Thank you, Mr. Topics Master. This is an interesting question. It's kind of along the line of what would you say to your 12 year old self that could have <laughs> made life better for you? I'm going to answer it in that way, and I, I think I'll be hitting the intent of your question. If I was going to give advice to my 12 year old self, it would be about relaxing into the experience of the various possibilities of life. I was a pretty happy kid. I dealt with certain aspects of life pretty well, but from a larger viewpoint, I was, I was really dealing only with a, a small slice of life. I really wasn't very social outside of specific school Green. activities or beyond, you know, activities that I had engaged in with my family. It took me a long time to realize, actually decades to realize, that I had a tendency towards social anxiety. And it took me a while to find out a way to deal with that more properly. Yellow. But after having gone through that loop, I realized that to some extent, what I, what I was missing out was just relaxing into the possibilities of whatever situation was presenting it, presenting itself and not trying to be worried or trying to create something out of, out of any given situation. That's what I would change if I could give some advice to my younger self. Thanks for the question. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thank you, Dan. All right. I'm trying to check the time here. 
I think we've got quite a bit of time still, maybe at least two more. Okay. Who would like to go next? Yeah. Art or Carmen? Carmen. Carmen. Carmen's up. All right. Um, Thank you, Carmen. Can someone can evaluate me? I need someone to evaluate me. Who's gonna do that? Art, could you evaluate Carmen for her table okay. topic? Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. So we got four, five, six, seven. <laughs> Number five. Right. Uh, please, I don't, <laughs> I don't see much in your background. Um, are you are you in a room where you have objects around you or no? Yeah, I have a lot of objects. Okay. Please pick an object. In you, behind you that has significance and describe what makes it such, why it's significant. <laughs> I am in my kitchen. <laughs> Good evening fellow Toastmasters. I'm Diego Aras at home. This is an interesting question. Actually, I can, what I have right now is my, my cell phone. And this is my cat. <laughs> <laughs> my black cat. <laughs> um, for me, the cell phone has been one of the best inventions. Uh, given in the last years. It is amazing how you have the whole world on your hands. At any time, you can grab any piece of information around the world, or you can tweet, or you can say something to the whole world. And that one is something that we should be grateful. And I appreciate Steve Jobs because he was the mind behind it. He, maybe he didn't have a lot of personal touch, but he was a genius when he, he made this, the cell phone. It is a great discovery. It's gonna be even better in future generations. Um, I am naturally looking forward to have a new one in a couple of years because I I bought my bought mine a, a month ago, but I could like those that are uh, they they are gonna say that they are gonna have like a crystal crystal screen on your on your wrist or something like that, and it's gonna be mind blowing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mister oh. Table Thank you, Carmen. Very insightful commentary. All right. I think we have time for one more. I think one we, more. We do, we do have to go back to do a genes evaluation. I think we'll be okay. okay. Art, so Art's, Art's going to go. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Art. We got six, all right, four, four, six, or seven. Four. All right. Oh, I, I was hoping you'd pick this one. I think you'll like this question. 
I was always convinced that my mother had eyes in the back of her head. Have you ever experienced a time where you were sure you got away with something but still got caught? Thank you for the question, Mr. Topics Master. I think my mom and dad both had eyes in the back of their head. <laughs> and they kept trading information back and forth, which increased the power of that extra pair of eyes. We had bushes growing at our house in Long Beach, California called pyracantha bushes, which produce copious numbers of red berries that are the size of my little fingernail, the tip of my little finger. And they are reasonably hard, but they squash when you step on them or when they hit something, if they're traveling fast. And if you use a little blow gun, a little tube, and load it up with pyracantha berries and then <laughs> blow really hard on the tube, a stream of pyracantha berries hitting a window will make a lot of noise and leave a lot of marks on the window. My mom probably did not need eyes in the back of her head to hear the sound <laughs> and to know exactly what was going on because she was very much the gardener and aware of what was what plants were flowering and producing fruit and I had a lot of jobs cleaning windows that I had smirched with barricanth and berry so I didn't really require the eyes in the back of her head, but I willingly suffered the consequences. It's so, so, so much fun to use that little blow gun. <laughs> Thanks for the question. Thank you, Art. You did not disappoint. In your answer. And with that, I think we'd like to move back. Speaking of looking back, we'd like to go back to Art's speech and have it evaluated by Gene Simonton Craig. Let's go ahead, as since we just finished with table topics, and uh, check with the timer, me, yeah, that too. about who qualified. Gene, what was my time? About 210. Okay, the qualifiers for table topics were Bob, Dan, Carmen, and Art. Bob, Dan, Carmen, and Art. You, you didn't can call, get called out this time. <laughs> I didn't call out the same people. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> Send a uh, vote to me, the Toastmaster, by private text, please. I think we can go ahead and turn things over to our general, general evaluator, Bob Fogel. And Bob can introduce Jean to give her speech evaluation. Here you go, Bob. Okay. Well, it's my privilege this evening to introduce Miss Jean Simonton Craig as our evaluator this evening. Take it away, Jean. Thank you, Mr. Uh, General Evaluator. It's a pleasure to hear Art's speech expanded and elaborated. 
I'm going to mention comments for areas that he excelled. Right at the very beginning, I thought his opening was very engaging. He says right away that even though I only had three private sessions the entire time I knew this person, and he gave three years, that he still had, this mentor still had such a profound influence on him. So that's quite a contrast because usually you think more time, more influence, but just, he just really set that up nicely. I also liked he did, he did a triad. So he said he, that Mr. Sokol demanded, created and cultivated excellence. So a triad is always, it's a three and it adds power and emphasis. He had a theme that he worked up to, which was mentor, the mentorship developed musicianship. So that was where he was going was musicianship, which was different from learning how to play the instrument, more expanded and refined. The, he was very good at setting up a description of the balance between heart and mind. Uh, head and head and heart and intellect and passion, which I thought was very fascinating. How do you be, how are you a musician that is channeling all this passion, but at the same time staying level-headed enough to know what you're doing and do what you're supposed to do? I also thought he had a climax in his talk, which was that scene where this mentor who's done so much to develop deep musicianship, still mentors the students by saying basically, just do anything else that you can, if you possibly can, which is oof, quite a whiplash expression, I would say. Uh, so all of those elements were in there and very engaging. For art, I would say a couple of things that would I would mention to work on. I He said at the beginning, he only met three times, but then he said, but he had over a hundred sessions of mentoring. And in my amateur brain, I was thinking, well, did he have three or did he have over a hundred? What was that? So my suggestion would be, it was, it was a little confusing to really clarify the two different types of mentoring sessions, private and then group, uh, which I knew that's what he was doing, but I think it would be a little clear. Also, he did mention, he was setting up the dichotomy between being a mentor and a coach. And he did mention Mr. Sokol was the mentor, but he contrasted him with the bassoon teacher. I would have liked him to use teacher and coach because I was still trying to understand the difference between teach a coach and a mentor. Uh, so just want to contrast mentor with coach. Excellent conclusion mentor driven by love and he's willing to tell you uh, not what you uh, not what you want to hear but what you needed to hear very well done thank you art bob we're hopping around a little bit but since you're the journal evaluator you could also call up the table topics evaluator now it's okay. part of your evaluation team <laughs> and our table topic is evaluator is Ms. Carmen Anatkona. Mm -hmm. Carmen, are you prepared to uh, give that right at the moment? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm going to start with Jean. The question for Jean was, describe a time where you focus on the past that you miss out the present. She was greeting the audience. She had good facial gesture when she was doing the speech. I could suggest to have a little bit more hand gestures. I haven't seen any hand gestures. Also, when you were when you were talking about the relationship between um, boyfriends and the sexism and the quality of life, it was a little bit kind of complex. 
to grab everything, in my opinion. Uh, it could be better maybe to choose uh, one experience and talk about it. Also, don't forget that sometimes you, over time, you are so involved in the, in the coven and your speech that you forgot the time. And we really enjoy it, but it's, we, we are shocked when someone tells you, oh no, she's, she is over time when, when it was really a great speech. Uh, and mm -hmm. it was, for Bob, the question was describe a time when a past experience cut you out in the present. You greet the audience. You were talking about your teenage years. There was a good hand gesture that I saw. And you were talking about with some humor in ball, which is pretty good. I would suggest to have a little bit less introduction and more content because I realized that the green card was up when it was kind of the introduction in your speech and wrapping up a little bit of the conclusion at the end, but overall it was a great speech. For Dan, if the question was, if there is something you can change about the past, what could it be and why? And then you thank the Mr. Table Talks. You describe a very good experience. It was easy to follow, I understand it. I could suggest that when you are thinking, you can see the camera and not looking around <laughs> somewhere else that, that happened to me too. I haven't seen any hand movements, which I suggest could be a little bit of help, but it was really good, and I think the experience that you picked, it was pretty awesome. For art, the question was, have you ever experienced a time when you were able to get out of something, but you still get caught? <laughs> and you greet the audience. The, your experience was really, really good and really humorous. Everybody enjoyed it. I suggest you that the Conclusion will be a little bit of a little bit of wrapping up your whole experience. At the end, I really like that it was very descriptive, and you always use words, English words that are pretty, pretty uh, descriptive, um, well chosen. It was a really good speech art. And thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, <clears throat> Madam's Table Topics Evaluator. Gene, I don't have my uh, itinerary in front of me. I don't have enough screens. Um, so okay. I don't know what's next. You're going to have to help me out on this. We're going to have to, you need a Toastmaster assistant is what it sounds like. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so if I could suggest the first thing we'll do is check with the timer to see which evaluator qualified, then we could vote for best evaluator. Mm -hmm. And then right. we could go back to you, Bob, and uh, get the reports, followed by your evaluation of the evaluators at the end of those. Okay. So as timer, I would like to tell you that as far as I could tell, <laughs> Carmen was the only evaluator to qualify. Oh, you are so in trouble. <laughs> you are so in trouble. <laughs> I mean, what is the point of being married to the timer if you can't get a, like, a little break? Jeez. I am really going to be in trouble once you get, hear the timer's report. But unfortunately, yeah. our speech evaluator did not qualify. 
We forgot to discuss with Carmen how much time she needed for table topics. So I, on the fly, gave her three to four minutes and she qualified. Oh, you give her a break. <laughs> now you are in more trouble. Yes, if, if, <laughs> although that doesn't seem possible. So I don't believe that we need to vote. <laughs> But I do believe I need to think of an exit strategy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back Bob, to you, I, Mr. General Evaluator. And Bob, I just put the rest of the meeting in the chat to everybody, the agenda part. So you, you have did? it a little bit. Yeah. I don't see it. I don't see it. Well, no, I don't why see not? It. You don't I, see it? No. no. Well, let's see here. Oh. I have uh, to hit enter. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you sort of can see it there. So okay. Right. So right now I'm doing the grammarian. Is that correct? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. You could do that. that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as, as grammarian this evening, First of all, I want to start out on me because when I gave the word of the day, probidity, I said I had triple syllables. So I did it wrong just to start off with. So I blew it as grammarian and the word of the day. Thanks, Dan, for pointing that out to me. Uh, then Jean, uh, she also wrote on there, I liked what she stated, uh, take a little deeper than I wanted to go. That was a nice little saying. I was like, right, expose yourself. But then he stepped back this a little bit. And he used the word interesting was subgated. Uh, that was it. And then the other thing is you <clears throat> color of lens or color of your perception. Those were, they really stood out for me. Dan, on yours, you had relaxing in, relaxing in the possibility of life. I think we all can find there. I thought it was a nice catchy saying, relaxing the possibility of life because you had a little social anxiety. And I believe that was, that was really good. I like that. Um, and then for Jean, oh, long paper, excuse me. Well, that's it for my, oh, yeah, for my grammarian part this evening. How about the word of the day? Word of the day. Only one person used that word, and that was Gene. Dan used it. I was going to say, I remember Dan used it. Dan used it. <laughs> well, and how many times did I use it, Bob? I just have one time on here. I think I used it twice. Gene's going to be scouring the video. Oh. I tell you, I I don't know what's hey, happened here. Jean's getting she's she's getting the shaft today. I am, <laughs> I am. Honey, oh, it's just simple misogyny. Don't worry about it. Yes. <laughs> Could happen to anybody. <laughs> Could I volunteer to do the timer report before yes. we move on? And then, as I say, I have to flee the country. <laughs> Art yeah. in his prepared speech was nine minutes, 20 seconds. Our table topics, Bob was two minutes, 20. Gene was two minutes, 32. Oh. Dan was two minutes, 10. Carmen, two minutes, even. Art, two minutes, 16. Our evaluations, Gene was three minutes, 34. And Carmen yes. was 405. That's my report. Okay. You see where we are, Bob? That's what I'm looking at the. I know it's a little crunch there. It's, we're at 848, technically. Yep. So the ah counter, now we pass it on to Carmen. Right. Uh, My report is for Aaron, one A uh, and one so, Bob, one um, Dan, clean, 
art, clean, jean, one a, uh, and one repeat. Mm -hmm. yeah, and be. Carmen, one a, uh, um, and one r. That's my report. Thank you, Carmen. And we pass it on to Art, who is our joke master for this evening. Art, take it away. A friend of mine was out at Walmart. He got a big bag of dog food, one of these 30 pounders. He was in the self checkout area. And he hoists the bag up on the platform. And the gal behind him in line says, Oh, you have a dog? And he's thinking to himself, Well, that's a dumb question. <laughs> Why else would I, let me have a little fun here. Well, no, actually I'm just trying out the Purina diet again. <laughs> she says, the Purina diet, does that work? I've never heard of that. She said, it's real simple. You put a bunch of nuggets in, in a pocket and every time you get hungry, you just pop one of these nuggets. He said, I'm, I'm debating with myself whether I should really do it or not. Because last time I did this, I ended up in a hospital with tubes and wires and coming out of everywhere. So I don't know, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it another shot. She said, oh, gosh. Did the thing poison you? He says, oh, no. He said, the diet was fine. But I stepped off the curb to pee on a tire and I got hit by a car. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for a good joke, Mr. Joke Master. <laughs> and now it's time to do the general evaluation on Jean and Carmen. So, Jean, we're going to start off. I, I like the way you started out with the triad, with the explanation of it, and that was really good. Uh, also, I noticed that even though you were evaluating art, it's we all heard art speaks and you were just kind of bouncing around a little bit, back and forth, just a tiny bit. Um, and I think you would have been better to maybe focus on a couple of points that art had done in his speech. Mm. And I believe you should have had a little bit better eye contact. Mm. And as far as taking notes, uh, you mentioned one thing with Art that um, uh, that you want him to kind of explain about the teacher coach example. If you remember, you were talking about that. And only the suggestion I might have is that maybe you give us an example uh, what maybe Art should know better. And that was my suggestion. But all in all, you did a great job and you explained everything from front to back, which Art did. And uh, good job. Carla, you're, um, for some reason on your computer, when I'm watching, I don't know if it's on everybody else's, but when you move, some, the camera just kind of locks or freezes up a little bit. And it, so it's hard for me to get the right notes. And so when I suggest that you might have a little better eye contact, maybe you do, it's just that it's lost in the transmission of the mm. thing. The observation. And then uh, you touch on everyone. And then also one of your suggestions would be that when you give your, that uh, you should give it a, uh, when you gave the suggestions about the gestures, maybe you should show us what those gestures are so that we all can follow along what that would be. Mm -hmm. All in all, you gave a good speech and uh, good job. That's it. All right. All right. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. It's time to quickly go through the awards. We had one speech tonight. It was a dynamite speech by Art. I think by acclamation, he's easily our best speaker.
we had oh, wait, I gotta get my things here. Okay, is Jean gonna do the there we go? Yay! <laughs> the <best> speaker. <laughs> All right. Hmm. <laughs> and table topics, give me a little drum roll. We had a number of excellent talks, and our winner was art. Ooh, art. Berries. He's grabbing, he's grabbing the ribbon. Very good. Yeah, oh, thank you. Okay, okay. <laughs> I thought he was doing kind of a Caesar thing or something. See, for, for me, he's over on that. He's, well, anyway, he's, <laughs> he's over to the one side. All right. All right. And for evaluator, our best evaluator was Carmen. And Gene, good sport, is going to put up that ribbon. I'm pouting. <laughs> I'm pouting. I'm only human. Okay, I got it. I got it. All right. Yes. Oh, hey. God. I, that's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It was All right. a little hard. <laughs> After that traumatic experience, I'm going <laughs> to hand things back to our president, Aaron Russell. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters, thank you for another wonderful, successful, fun, and exciting meeting. Just a couple announcements for tonight. Tomorrow, 8 p.m., we have our officer meeting. Um, I will be setting out the agenda probably as soon as this meeting ends. And yeah, we are meeting on the, the district, the district, uh, Zoom account, I guess. Do people still have the passcode and links? Could you just put it in the agenda when you send it? Yeah, I'll do that. That's that would be best. And maybe copy Bob if Bob maybe maybe gets free from whatever he's doing. I should be able to. Mm -hmm. okay. One quick thing. This may be a little long, so maybe we should. Uh, Discuss it after we adjourn. So is it, is it quick or not? <laughs> I don't think it's that quick. Okay. But it's related to that meeting timing. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's all I really had as far as major announcements. I think we can end it there. Thank you all once again. And stick around to continue discussions after the meeting is over. Thank you. Thank you.